As you can see, we are going to be talking about correlation today. Correlation um, is a measure of the relationship or the linear relationship between two variables. Before I get into what correlation is specifically, I wanted to talk about the first two figures on the top. They're actually the same exact data set. The only difference is if you notice at the bottom, the scale is what has changed. So this first one on the left, these numbers are closer together, whereas the one on the right, they're further apart. So it's the same exact data set just graphed on different scale. So when you look at the left side one, it doesn't really look like there's a straight necessarily pattern going down through the middle, indicating a re linear relationship. But on the right side, it does. They're more clustered together. It looks like perhaps if I were to put a line somewhere in the middle here, this would be a representative line of the data. Whereas this one, hmm, I can kind of figure out one, but since it looks like it's so scattered apart, I'm not really sure. These are the same exact data sets, so you might be asked, well, how do I find a, if a linear relationship exists? That is where correlation is going to help us. So, like I said, the correlation measures the direction and the strength of a linear relationship between two quantitative variables. These have to be numbers. Typically, we represent it with the letter R. And if you have the two sets of data, we do have our, our equation down here. For R. And R is equal to 1 divided by the number of variables minus 1, or how many sets there are. And then remember, this symbol here is that sum. And then what you do is you take each number minus the average for that variable, so in this case the x's, and then divide it by the standard deviation for x's. Do the same with y, so take each variable minus the mean divided by the standard deviation and then multiply those two together and then repeat it for every set. Now, you can already tell, well, that would be a lot of work. First of all, I have to find the mean of each one, I have to find the standard deviation of each one, then I have to do the subtracting and multiplying. So it does become cumbersome, but why do it by hand when we have a way that we can do it um, other ways? So before I get into our first example, it's important to note that the correlation is always between negative 1 and 1. Think of those as like 100%. Um, so negative would indicate a negative relationship, so it would be sloping down. So from the left to the right, our line would be going down. And the closer to positive 1, the stronger the relationship and it would be a positive. So as we were talking about in the last section, well, does it look like it's a positive or a negative relationship? That is what we're talking about. And then the closer to zero, the weaker the relationship. Uh, if you get exactly one or exactly negative one, it would be a perfect linear relationship. Uh, for instance, if we are looking at a class set and we looked at different classes, and in every single class, there were twice as many boys as girls in every single classroom. That would be a case of a perfect linear relationship. So no matter where I go, there's always twice as many boys as girls. So let's do our first example here. We have our two bone lengths. So this is our femur, which is the leg bone, and these are me measured in centimeters. And the humerus, which is the bone in your upper arm, and again, measured in centimeters. So what we're going to do is make a scatter plot. Now, we've made a scatter plot several times. So we're going to do this on Excel. So we're going to go into Excel, and if you want, you can label it. So we have femur humerus, and you're going to put in your data sets. And we're using Excel, or you can use another spreadsheet 
program because as you can see this formula is pretty complex it would take a, a lot of time to calculate it and since we have the technology that does it it doesn't really make sense to do that so highlight make this bigger now and we're going to insert we have our scatter plot so this is just going to take off the title of the two here. This is the data set graphed against each other. So I have 38, 41. Uh, this ordered pair would be the 56, 63, etc. So what we're going to do is look for the linear line that exists in the middle. This one, it looks really fairly linear, so we can calculate the correlation. So if we do equals and start spelling, correlate, you'll see that this coral, or corral, I don't know how to pronounce that, is showing up. And it tells us that it returns the correlation coefficient between the two data sets. And then it says array one, so we would highlight our first set, and then highlight our second set. So this has a correlation of not 0.994. That's really close to one, so this would indicate a very strong linear relationship. So we have our scatter plot, a correlation. Now we're going to make con conclusions about the relationship between the length of the femur and the length of the humerus. So since the correlation is strong, I would say that there would be a sign there would be a linear equation that we could find to represent the linear relationship between the two. It's a strong 1.99. It's really close to 1, so it would be a very strong relationship. And I also, that's good. We have a couple of things that we want to talk about about correlation. Uh, first of all, we already talked about they have to be quantitative, both variables, so they need to be numbers. Now, with this one, it doesn't matter which one I make the explanatory or the response. I can do it either way. Um, so if you wanted to switch the two variables, we could. So let's, I'll just copy and paste here. So if I switch the two, you can make a scatter pot. If you wanted to, but we're not going to, we're just going to do same exact correlation. So it doesn't matter which variable you have. Is the explanatory or the response? So the explanatory is your input, what you're putting in, or your x-axis. The response would become your y or your output. You can change the units of measure without changing the value of R. So this one, our data set was measured in put these side by side, centimeters. So if we wanted to, we could take and make all of these values um, bigger by 100. So we go to millimeters, notice it's the same exact one um, if we change the unit. So the correlation stays the same. Now, correlation is not resistant. So if there is an outlier on here, it will affect it. So if we throw in, add another variable here, I don't know, we'll say 80, 200. That one's pretty far off. Notice how that outlier really changes the correlation, whereas if we get rid of it or we change it, make it more reasonable, um, a 90 would be more reasonable. It's going to change that relationship back again. So outliers will make a significant difference in the correlation. So the correlation tells us just how strong the relationship is between two sets of data. If it's a positive number, it'll look linear. If it's negative, then it'll be a linear sloping down. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to. So the po positive is sloping up, 
negative is sloping down. It does not give us a complete picture. It also doesn't tell us anything about, well, what if we had a relationship that was quadratic? Um, we've talked about a couple of those before. So they end up looking like it makes a U would be quadratic. So if the data set looks like this, correlation, it will tell you you don't have a correlation. It might, depending on where your variables are, it might give you a really low correlation, a number close to zero. But the pattern still could, if we put dots here, could be, there's definitely, so if this was, say, our scatter plot, this one definitely has a relationship. It just happens to be quadratic. Correlation will not indicate anything about other forms. It is only for linear.